we just got some exciting, huge cruise restart news the other day. Royal Caribbean revealed its return to service plans for sailings from the United States. In this announcement, Royal Caribbean revealed itineraries for six ships that will begin sailing from Florida and Texas as early as July 2nd. In fact, by the end of August, Royal Caribbean plans to have eight ships sailing from US home ports and 12 ships cruising across the Bahamas, Caribbean, and Europe. Don't worry if you missed any of the details because we're here to help. I'm DB from Eat Sleep Cruise, and in this video, we break down the Royal Caribbean US restart plans, detailing all the ships, itineraries, and start dates next. Now, Royal Caribbean had already announced it was going to return to service in North America with sailings on Adventure of the Seas from Nassau, Bahamas. Those sailings actually begin this upcoming Saturday. In yesterday's announcement, Royal Caribbean indicated they'll be sailing from various ports throughout North America over the summer months. The first ship to debut in the US for Royal Caribbean will be the newly amplified Freedom of the Seas from Miami, Florida. This special 4th of July weekend sailing will include a visit to Perfect Day at Coco Cay and is scheduled to leave on July 2nd. The newly amplified Freedom of the Seas debuted last March and actually did one cruise right before the cruise shut down. The ship underwent a $100 million amplification, receiving brand new venues and updates throughout the ship. Luckily, the Princess and I were able to board that first and only cruise on this updated ship so far. You can check out our complete amplified Freedom of the Seas ship tour and review where we go deck by deck detailing all of the updates made to this vessel. We learned a few weeks ago that Freedom of the Seas had been approved by the CDC for a two night test cruise from Miami, Florida from June 20th to the 22nd. It appears the cruise line is confident that the test cruise will be successful and that Freedom of the Seas will be able to return to service a couple weeks after. Following this highly anticipated restart, Odyssey of Seas will begin her inaugural season on July 3rd. This brand new ship will sail six and eight night Caribbean cruises from Fort Lauderdale. In this announcement, Royal Caribbean President and CEO Michael Bailey said that this restart plan was in part due to the successful rollout of vaccines all over the world. According to Bailey, 90% of all vacationers booking with Royal Caribbean are either vaccinated or plan to get vaccinated in time for their cruise. However, during this announcement, Royal Caribbean did not indicate if vaccinations would be required for some of these cruises. In fact, with several test cruises being announced for other ships, including Allure of the Seas and Symphony of the Seas, as well as Independence of the Seas and Mariner of the Seas, it's very apparent that Royal Caribbean believes it will not hit the CDC threshold of 95% of passengers vaccinated. In this announcement, the president also thanked several government officials, including Florida Governor Ron DeSantis who, if you may recall, is still currently suing the CDC to get rid of the conditional sailing order. Regardless of those developments, the most exciting news about Royal Caribbean's restart plans is that many of these cruises are available to book right now. When it comes to cruising from the US, we already know that Serenity of the Seas and Ovation of the Seas will bypass the test cruise requirement to expedite the process of sailing in Alaska this summer. Now, to bypass the CDC's requirement for test cruises, Cruise lines need to attest that 98% of the crew and 95% of passengers sailing on a vessel are fully vaccinated. For the Serenity of the Seas and Ovation of the Seas sailings, Royal Caribbean is requiring vacationers who are 16 years of age or older to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19. And starting August 1st, it's requiring those 12 or older to be vaccinated. Serenity of the Seas is set to be the first cruise ship sailing from Seattle, Washington when she set sail on July 19th. Currently, Ovation of the Seas is due to set sail from Seattle, Washington on August 13th. Now, given these timelines, that has us speculating whether Odyssey of the Seas will be required to complete a test cruise, or will that ship sail fully vaccinated for a portion of her inaugural season? There is some speculation online that that ship will be doing a test cruise starting June 21st. However, Royal Caribbean has not made any announcements about test cruises on that ship so far. Following the special three-day 4th of July weekend cruise, Freedom of the Seas will alternate with three and four night Bahama and Perfect Day sailings from Miami. Other restart dates include Allure of the Seas doing seven night Eastern and Western Caribbean itineraries from Port Canaveral starting on August 8th. Symphony of the Seas will also do seven night Eastern and Western Caribbean sailings from Miami, Florida starting on August 14th. Independence of the Seas will offer seven night Western Caribbean sailings from Galveston, Texas 
starting on August 15th. Merit of the Seas will be offering three and four night Bahamas and perfect day at Coco Cay sailings from Port Canaveral starting on August 23rd. Now some of these sailings are actually replacing existing itineraries. The sailings on Freedom of the Seas, Odyssey of the Seas, and Independence of the Seas are replacement itineraries for existing sailings that were scheduled on Navigator of the Seas, Independence of the Seas, Explorer of the Seas, and Liberty of the Seas. Royal Caribbean will automatically transfer guests to the new ships for these sailings. In this update, Royal Caribbean also indicated that Harmony of the Seas will return to cruising in Europe starting on August 15th. The ship will sail seven night itineraries to the Western Mediterranean and visit iconic destinations in Spain, Italy, and France. These newly announced cruises are in addition to the previously announced itineraries outside of North America, including UK sailings on Anthem of the Seas, and Cyprus and Greece sailings on Jewel of the Seas. The cruise line did confirm that all crew members will be vaccinated on all Royal Caribbean ships. Now the cruise line is strongly encouraging individuals that set sail to be fully vaccinated if they're eligible. Based on current health procedures, those without a vaccination will have to undergo testing as well as follow other protocols which the cruise line will announce closer to the sailing dates. Further, if departing from an international port, guests must meet the travel requirements of their home country and the country of departure. Now, this does seem like a little bit of backtracking on Royal Caribbean, whose parent company, Royal Caribbean Group's chairman and CEO, Richard Fain, has been pretty vocal about the power of vaccinations and that Royal Caribbean would be requiring vaccinations for their cruises. Now, vaccinations are required for cruisers 16 years of age or older on Adventure of the Seas cruises that start this Saturday from Nassau, Bahamas. Now, because those sailings originate outside the US, they're not bound by the CDC conditional sailing order. In fact, Royal Caribbean just revealed the Adventure of the Seas protocols for these initial sailings, and the cruise line is not requiring vaccinated guests to wear masks at any point on the vessel, while unvaccinated guests, which in this case will most likely be children 16 years of age or younger, will be required to wear a mask while indoors. A few weeks ago, the CDC updated its guidance and recommendations for health and safety measures on cruise ships, indicating that cruise ships sailing with 95% of passengers fully vaccinated do not need to require a mask or social distancing while indoors or outdoors. However, unvaccinated guests do still need to comply with health and safety measures, including social distancing and wearing face masks. Of course, these health and safety measures are evolving, and it is possible, given the later start dates for some of these cruises, that those procedures and protocols could be different than what's currently recommended by the CDC. Royal Caribbean and Origin Cruise Line partnered early this year with several health experts for the Healthy Sail panel. That panel proposed a number of health and safety measures that should be employed on cruise ships to mitigate the spread of infectious diseases. Given what we know about the Adventure of Seas protocols, as well as Royal Caribbean's vague language about the health and safety protocols on these newly announced sailings, it's likely that some of the recommendations from the Healthy Sail panel will not be implemented on these cruises. Royal Caribbean did indicate that it will update guests with the health and safety measures for their specific sailings prior to the departure dates. Now with these 12 cruise ships, we still don't know restart plans for about the other half of Royal Caribbean's fleet. However, the cruise line did say, that they plan to have all ships sailing by the end of the year. With these restart plans, unfortunately, Royal Caribbean did confirm cancellations for all other cruises in July and August. Cruises outside of those that were announced the other day will be canceled through the end of August. And there you have it. That's a detailed look at Royal Caribbean's cruise restart plans for the US. Now, if you enjoyed that video, we have tons of other videos focusing on Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, from everything that's included on a Royal Caribbean cruise, to tips for drink packages, dining plans, and tons of other cruise tips. If you're interested in learning about other cruise lines, we recommend you check out our top 10 best new cruise ships for 2021. If you enjoyed this video, we'd really appreciate it. Give it a big thumbs up. We'd also love to hear from you. You can reach out to us all over social media at Eat Sleep Cruise, where we help you see the world one port at a time.